Oh, what a doozy. So, WWE Fastlane just finished. And, you know, I thought I'd, I'd want to get my opinions on it. It's, a, it's WWE's introduction to Peacock. So, they must have busted out the big guns. So, I'm going to go over a rundown of the, the matches that I could at least remember. I might be forgetting some or get the order wrong. But this is just from what I saw. The pre-show match between Matt Riddle versus friggin' Mustafa Ali was great. I'd say the wrong person won. I definitely think Ali should have got the victory. Also, Retribution broke up, so that's fun. They didn't do anything of note except for take a chainsaw to the to the SmackDown ring. But yeah, Retribution's no more. I don't give a shit. So once the show started, we started off with the uh, raw, the uh, women's tag titles. The match was okay. I, f f I kind of find it stupid that Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are still the champions. But whatever happens, happens. <laughs> uh, they retained their titles in a match that was... It was okay. I feel like it worked as a curtain jerker because it didn't have too much energy, but it definitely got you excited for what's to come in the night. Uh, after that came the Intercontinental title match, Big E versus Apollo Crews. Can I just say, I, I don't really like Apollo Crews' character all too much. It's uh, not a favorite of mine, I'd say. He, but the match was really good. They beat the ever-loving shit out of each other. Uh, it ended with Big E getting a win that was kind of cheap. I didn't really like the ending, but it definitely set up a rematch at WrestleMania. I hope they do a false count anywhere match. Something like that. So, after that, we got... Um... Friggin' Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon, or what was that was what's supposed to happen. Instead, though, Shane McMahon made up some bullshit excuse that he hurt his leg in training. Clearly, it was just for the story. He didn't actually hurt his leg. At least I'm one hundred I'm like ninety-nine point nine 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 million nine percent sure. He's totally fine. So instead, we got Braun Strowman versus Elias. And it was what you expect. It wasn't good, but it felt like it was supposed to carry you over for the energy of the next match. Speaking of, next was easily match of the night, Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. And, and can, can somebody remind them that WWE is fake? Because I feel like they forgot that... <laughs> I mean, I guess they were told, hey, you're not allowed to slap your leg anymore. So they just hit each other hard enough that it made a sound anyways. Uh, notable spots include Drew McIntyre throwing Sheamus through the, through the Thunderdome screens. Sheamus hitting McIntyre with white noise onto the announce table, which looks like, which looked like it really hurt Sheamus. And the end of the match, which was Drew McIntyre hitting Sheamus with Future Shock, then the clay floor for the one, two, three. It was just, whoo, it was really good. Uh, after that was a bit of a disappointment to me, although my dad pretty much told me that that's exactly what was going to happen. Randy Orton versus Alexa Bliss. So... I was really shocked because it was an intergender intergender match that was being built up seriously. You know, most of the time when WWE do intergender matches, it's mostly for comedic reasons. Uh, you know, the two other intergender matches I've seen in my life, James Ellsworth versus Becky Lynch, and... Um, uh, Reginald versus Sasha Banks. Those were basically comedy matches. But this one was being built up seriously. So I was curious to see how they'd play out. 
and eh, it was definitely what I expected, yet still disappointed. Uh, Randy Orton didn't land a damn hit on Alexa Bliss. He basically just chased her around, uh, throwing fireballs at him, fire coming from the ring, lights dropping from the ceiling. The match was clearly pre-recorded. But at the end, the Fiend returned, and he his costume honestly looks fucking stupid. He hit Randy Orton with the his sister Abigail, and then the referee, and then Alexa Bliss won the match. Uh, it, was, it was okay. I think in the Universal Title match, which was friggin' awesome, let me tell you, what a way. To end the night. Uh, so, there's a lot of back and forth. Daniel Bryan was, like, not giving up at all. He was beating the shit out of Roman. Roman was beating the shit back. Absolutely going to war. Ro Daniel kept getting Roman in the yes lock. The bell lock, or whatever the hell they're calling it this week. Roman... Hit Brian with spear after spear, but he kept kicking out. Roman Daniel hit Roman with the. Uh, the match got a bit strange though when Daniel hit the referee with the running knee on accident. So then Edge, who was the special outside enforcer, came in, and he he was at first trying to call it down the middle. Uh, but then Daniel Bryan had Roman Reigns in the yes lock in the middle of the ring. And then Jey Uso comes out. Super kicks. Friggin' Edge super kicks Daniel Bryan. Grabs a chair and starts beating the crap out of them. But then Daniel Bryan hits Jey Uso with a running knee. And then he goes to hit Roman with a chair but accidentally hits Edge. So, after that, he gets Roman back in the yes lock. And Roman actually taps. Yeah, Roman legit actually taps out to the yes lock. Well, it's less of a tap, more of a... <laughs> so... But Edge wasn't able to see it. And because he got hit by a chair from Daniel, he started being Daniel and Roman with the chair before walking off. And then a referee came in. Roman pinned Daniel. Match was over. Um, I think that might be leading up to a triple threat at WrestleMania. Not too sure, though. Overall, the show was pretty good. If I were to... Rate it out of five stars. I'd probably give it three and a half. It was a good introduction to WWE on Peacock. But yeah, I really hope that WrestleMania is better. And uh, one more thing. Just remember, Little Mac is underrated. And personally, I'm coming for your shit.